for downloading my 60 second emotion switch. Are you remembering to use it? If so, is it working for you? I'd love to hear about your experiences with this tool, so please reach out and let me know. You can connect with me via email or Facebook on the links below. And don't be too hard on yourself if you don't switch every time you find yourself snappy, teary or weary. The reason your emotions are up and down is because you care. If you didn't care, you wouldn't feel anything. Caring is who you are and what makes you such a nice person. But it's when caring too much causes you to feel responsible for other people's emotions that you are the one who ends up suffering, trying to look after everyone around you except you. Today, I will show you how to notice when you're taking responsibility for other people's emotions and how letting go of that impossible feat can set you free from unnecessary worry and anxiety. Let me share a personal example to demonstrate. I met my wonderful husband 20 years ago in Outback Queensland when I was travelling for work and he was touring the world with his mate on their motorbikes starting in their hometown Dublin Island. It was love at first sight and he has lived here in Australia with me ever since. A few months after he moved in with me he started to feel homesick. My reaction was to worry about it and I mean worry about it constantly. Although I didn't realise it at the time I felt completely responsible for his happiness because he was here for me. What I was forgetting was that worry is a form of fear and fear is a powerful emotion which attracts to you the thing that you fear. I'd set up a vicious cycle of stress, worry, anxiety and unhappiness. What I can see now looking back at that time is that it was his decision to stay with me. I didn't force him to do it, he chose to live in Australia. All I could do was be the best version of me, which of course is the happy version, to make that choice worth it. The thing is, the only emotions you are responsible for are yours, and you can't blame someone else for your emotions, even if your intentions are good, like in the example of trying to keep other people happy. You're trying to do the impossible, and in the meantime, you're making yourself unhappy. Through my own personal experience and after working with so many kind-hearted women, I've come to understand that this need to keep everyone happy is an unhealthy level of people-pleasing. It's when you think, feel or do things to keep someone else happy to the detriment of your own happiness. Have you ever avoided saying what you really want to say to someone because you're afraid that you might offend them? I'm sure you have, we all do this from time to time. However, what I've come to realise is that over time you can lose yourself in your quest to always keep the peace because you don't really share what is true for you. This can result in you doing things that you don't really want to do, which keeps you so busy that you don't have time for the things that are important to you. Ultimately, you end up stressed and exhausted because you're trying to keep everyone else happy. So how can you stop this cycle? Well, the first step is to notice. You can't change something that you can't see. Next time you're about to react to a person who is either expressing a negative emotion or asking you to do something, stop. Stop and take a breath and say to yourself, how they choose to feel right now is up to them and how I choose to feel is up to me. I choose to feel and insert the feeling that you choose, not the emotion the other person is expressing or the one you would normally express out of habit in this situation, but the one you want to feel. If someone is asking you to do something that you really don't want to do, you may choose to feel strong in that moment or genuine or authentic. Saying no for the first time to someone can feel uncomfortable, but I promise that you will feel relief once you've done it. Just yesterday, I received this beautiful message from one of my clients. I said no today, Tracy. I've had my granddaughter for two days, which I absolutely love, but my children turned up today and said they were going out and they would pick her up later. 
I said yes at first, but I'm really not feeling the best, so I rang them and said I was sorry, but no, I couldn't have her for the whole day. I feel so much better just saying no when I need a rest. Thank you. Now remember to be gentle with your newfound resolve to be honest. The people you've been saying yes to won't be prepared, so share your truth with them kindly and with love. Explain yourself and your reasons for saying no so that they can understand. It may not be no that you want to say. You may just have a different opinion than the other person, but you don't share it to avoid confrontation. Remember that having a different opinion doesn't make them wrong or you wrong. We are all entitled to our own opinions. Share what you feel is true for you without any expectation from them to agree with you. Not sharing how you feel slowly eats you up inside. We call it soul destroying. Of course your soul can't be destroyed, but not being authentic is out of alignment with your soul, which robs you of your peace and happiness. Write in your journal at the end of each day the situations that you noticed you were feeling like you were responsible for someone else's emotions. You may not change the way you react at first, and that's okay. The first step is just to become aware of any habit that you may have that doesn't feel good. Let me know how you go. Next week, I'll share with you how you developed the habits that stop you from being constantly happy and how you can change them. So watch out for my email and let me know how you go with releasing responsibility for other people's feelings, which by the way, doesn't mean you stop caring about them and saying what you really mean. Until then, choose happiness today.